Mr. Chairman, delegates, friends, and my fellow Americans, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am deeply humbled by your confidence, and on behalf of my family, here and gone, I accept your nomination to run and serve as Vice President of the United States of America. And let me thank Speaker Paul Ryan for that gracious welcome. Paul, you're a true friend and a great American leader. But Paul knows me well, and he knows the introduction I prefer is just a little bit shorter. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. You know, I'm new to this campaign, and honestly, I I never thought I'd be standing here. I thought I'd be spending this evening with all my friends from the great state of Indiana. Yet there I was, a few days ago in New York City, with the man who won 37 states, who faced 16 talented opponents and outlasted every one of them and along the way brought millions of new voters into the Republican Party. You know, he's a, he's a man known for a large personality, a, a colorful style, and lots of charisma, and so I guess he was just looking for some balance on the ticket. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, which is most of you, I grew up on the front row of the American dream. My grandfather immigrated to this country. I was raised in a small town in southern Indiana in a big family with a cornfield in the backyard. Although we weren't really a political family, the heroes of my youth were President John F. Kennedy and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. When I was young, I watched my mom and dad build everything that matters, a family, a business, and a good name. I was raised to believe in hard work, in faith, and family. My dad, Ed Pence, was a combat veteran in Korea. Dad ran gas stations in our small town, and he was a great father. If Dad were with us today, I'd have a feeling he'd enjoy this moment and probably be pretty surprised. <laughs> but it's such a joy for me to tell you that my mother is here. Would you join me in welcoming the light of my life, my mom, Nancy. You know, growing up, I actually started in politics in the other party until I heard the voice on the ideals of the 40th president, and I signed on for the Reagan revolution. But the best thing that ever happened to me, even counting tonight, is that 31 years ago, I married the girl of my dreams, a school teacher, an artist. She is everything to me. Would you welcome my wonderful wife, Karen Pence?
And regardless of any title I'll ever hold, the most important job I'll ever have is spelled D-A-D. Karen and I are blessed. Karen and I are blessed to be the parents of the three greatest kids in the world. A writer named Charlotte, a college student named Audrey, and a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps, Michael J. Pence. I'm so proud of you guys. Now, if you know anything about Hoosiers, you know we love to suit up and compete. We play to win. That's why I joined this campaign in a heartbeat. You have nominated a man for president who never quits, who never backs down, a fighter, a winner. Until now, he's had to do it all by himself against all odds. But this week, with this united party, he's got back up. And on November 8th, I know we will elect Donald Trump to be the 45th president of the United States of America. Now, we'll win because we're running on the issues facing this country and because we're leveling with the American people about the stakes and the choice. You know, the American people are tired of being told. They're tired of being told that this is as good as it gets. They're tired of hearing politicians in both parties tell us that we'll get to that tomorrow while we pile a, a mountain range of debt on our children and our grandchildren. And as Ronald Reagan used to say, they're tired of being told that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives better for us than we can plan them for ourselves. In the end, this election comes down to just two names on the ballot, so let's resolve here and now that Hillary Clinton will never become President of the United States of America. Now, Hillary Clinton essentially offers a third Obama turn, and the role is perfect for her. She championed Obamacare because years earlier she had all but invented it. The national debt has nearly doubled in these eight years, and her only answer is to keep borrowing and spending. And like the president, she thinks the path to a growing economy is more taxes, more regulation, and more government. Now, they tell us this economy is the best that we can do. It's nowhere near the best that we can do. It's just the best that they can do. And let me tell you, I know firsthand it, it doesn't have to be like this. In my home state of Indiana, we prove every day that you can build a growing economy on balanced budgets, low taxes, even while making record investments in education and roads and health care. You know, Indiana is a state that works because conservative principles work every time you put them into practice. <laughs> 